You want to be a robot? Or do you want to be a human being? Let's talk. We are here to pick up the car. Let's step back into the office. All right, happy Tuesday. It's one o'clock. The car's been done. For those of you that don't know, we had the car in the shop. Thirteen hundred dollars worth of work. Catalytic converter, and you got to pay labor. Blah, blah 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 blah. It's all it's all good. Now we're back in a ride. I had to get the car retagged, so I had to get passing emissions test. So that's why I had to get this thing done. So we're gonna go do that. But I want to talk about an important topic. But before we get into that, if you missed yesterday's video, we talk about car maintenance repairs, how much I've spent in the last over a little over two and a half years of doing gig life. What have you guys spent? Go check out that video. Uh, share your thoughts in the comment section if you're somebody that can give insightful uh, information about repairs and how to handle them and what to look for. A lot of really great comments in that video. Go check them out. But today I've been getting some emails and I got one today and it kind of sparked something in me and I want to have a conversation. These gig apps, in some states already, they already have drivers feeling and thinking like an employee, whether it's with legislation or whatever, or how they word things within the app. It's going to happen more and more and more and more. I think some could say the companies want us to be employees. Others would say they don't because there's a lot more labor costs involved and things like that and benefits they have to then pay out if we're technically called employees and W-2s. However... These big companies, gig companies especially, are really good and sneaky about not having to pay the benefits of making you a W-2 employee, but making you feel like it and making the app feel like you're a W-2 employee and wording and doing things in a way that's going to save them millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars while not giving you any kind of benefit and allowing you to take the crap orders and making you feel bad or almost good in taking the lowball orders to the miserable human beings that don't tip. Let's go. I got a rant for y'all today. Let's get into it. I almost forgot. You are tuning into, appreciate you clicking on the video, Pedro Dordas Santiago, where we talk all things gig apps, all things betting on yourself, motivation, relatability, all that good stuff. So if you're down for that, continue to watch. And if you get value from this content, consider hitting the like up, the like button. Consider subscribing. Now, I'll show you guys a little bit of my city as we're driving around, running some errands today, and we're going to get into the topic. But I got to remind y'all, everything in this video is going to be a matter of opinion. Uh, matter of let's talk about it. Everybody has a difference in opinion. I want to stay that first because y'all know I'm super opinionated here, but I'm also like to challenge the community to think of things that these companies do at the surface level. It might look okay. And sometimes it might be okay, but you have to think bigger picture because if you think bigger picture in a moment, it's going to allow you, in my opinion, to make the most amount of money as quickly as you can with these apps so you can move on to something else. And for all my people that love these apps and want to do them forever because it works for you. Maybe you're retired, maybe you're a single parent and you got to, you know, you got to do this. Whatever the reason is, if you're going to do it for the foreseeable future, you still should want to make the most, not being taken advantage of, not delivering low ball orders. Let's get into today's topic. I'm going to give you guys opinion. Then we're going to test it out in live time. We'll crunch the numbers. Option A versus option B, option one versus option two, and we'll see which one might be better. And I want you guys to try it out if it hits your market. Put a comment down below if you've already seen this, if you've tried it, if you've done it. What do you think about it? Look at that arch. Let's go ahead and hit this video running. Okay, so earn how you always earn. Option one, you know, you just turn it on, you get to keep 100% of your tips and whatever. Decline what you want, unassigned, it's all good. Option two, you'll earn $14 an hour DoorDash pay plus 100% of customer tips. I hate how they put that in there because we should, <laughs> duh, we should get the tips. It's absolutely ridiculous that they even have to say that. From the time you accept an order, so I hate accept, boom, time starts from when you drop it off. So that means it's one o'clock, you accept a Chipotle order. You drop it off at 1.30. After waiting, whatever, you drop it off 130 because I'll prorate it. You're going to make seven dollars in base pay for that, plus whatever tips there. So, if there's a two, three dollar tip, you're going to make nine, ten bucks. If there's no tip, you're going to make seven. If there's a great tip, you'll make more. For some markets, for some times of the day, this might be good because for you, if it's slow and you're going to wait, you're making a little bit more money waiting. Whereas the first option, like what we normally do, you're not getting any wait time, zero wait time. You're getting whatever that base pay is. 
You're getting whatever the tip is, that's it. Now, the caveat here is it's prorated. So they're telling you $14 an hour, but it's just on active time. So it's not when you turn the dash on, right? Until when you're waiting for orders, it's when you accept one and then when you actually drop it off, okay? Why are they doing this? It's quite simple. There are a lot of orders that get arrived late, customers complain cold food, customers never get their order. When these things happen, DoorDash loses money. They either have to issue a refund, whatever. Merchants lose money as well. Wasted manpower of making those items, throwing food away. So this can solve for a big issue. And you guys know I hate wasted food. It's my biggest pet peeve in the world is the amount of food we waste. It's ridiculous. So this could help for that. Now, DoorDash does not care if there's a tip on their guys. They don't care if the customer tipped. They don't care, they don't care, they don't care. They wanna get it to the customer. They wanna take all the feeds from the customer, it's feeds from the merchants. We've talked about this, you guys know that. For anybody new here, I've said it a thousand times. So the reason they're doing this isn't to benefit you. Repeat that. The reason they're doing this isn't to benefit you. It's to benefit them and the consumer. Because a lot of customers, and especially in certain areas, do not leave tips, or it's a long drive, drivers don't take it for those reasons, or drivers unassigning, like I teach you to do, if it's a long wait, because time is money. This is a way to incentivize you, the driver, to stay and wait for an order. And to maybe take an order that maybe on the surface doesn't look great, but you're thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna get some pay for my active wait time. So there's some good there for some of you. You have to know your market, I can't say that for you. For me, in my area, I'm not hitting option two. I feel like I'm still gonna cost myself money. Waiting is not, 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 not good. I've done it sometimes trying to practice patience, but overall waiting is a bad thing, okay? You should, different times of day, different days of the week, different merchants you should have. I'm gonna wait five minutes, I'm willing to wait 10, I'm willing to wait 15. If it's an absolute banger, two, three, four hundred dollar order, I mean, I, I might wait an hour, right? It depends, but those are rare. But at the end of the day, this is just to get the most, to, to continue to get the most amount of people served on this platform. That's how these apps will make money. They do not care what we're making. If there's a tip, they don't, because they know we're replaceable. Somebody else will come do this app. If I stop working for DoorDash tomorrow, there's 20 people waiting to come on and take my spot. The apps know that, so they don't care. Now, the bigger picture. This looks like an employee pay model. When anytime it's saying $14 an hour, we'll pay you this, they're trying to control you. They want you to wait, they don't want you to unassign, they want you to wait, wait, wait. What is, that sounds like an employee mindset to me. We're getting eerily closer in many markets and eventually maybe everywhere to where we're going to be like employees without the benefits, that's super scary. For me, when those things happen, I won't be on these apps anymore, probably. I might turn them on here and there. That's my goal. You should have one as well. We talk about that. Why are you using these apps? Stepping stone, bridge to something better. But the closer we get to employee status, employee mindset, and that's what they want. They want employee mindset. And most people that work these apps have an employee mindset. Nothing wrong with that. It's a lot of different ways to make money. That's just not for me. And I think it's not for some of y'all. We have to be careful with the verbiage the lingo, the words, whatever you want to call it, that these apps are using to get these orders out there. They're going to wrap it up real nice. They're buying you a crappy present for your birthday, but they're going to wrap it up real nice, put a nice big bow on it, put your nice little name tag, Pedro, ooh, ooh, write it in fancy. I'm going to open that up. And inside, it's really not much. What do you guys think? Drop a comment down below. So let's test this in real time. I just turned the app on, see if I get an order, okay? So if I had that option and I selected option two to get that, it does, it's 825, it's four miles. Now, we are four minutes away. So the timer started now. So we're gonna call it two, 224. Let's see how long this order takes us from beginning to end, okay? And if, well, I'll show you what the base pay is and we'll see what the difference is, option one, option two. Now, this order for me is a decent one anyway at this time of the day, 224. I just turned the app on. This is the first thing I've done all day. Just got the car back, right? So at 820, you know, it's over two dollars. It's basically two bucks a mile. It's time of the day where it's slow, merchant that I like, all the good things for me and my strategy. But let's say this order said four dollars or three dollars, very low. 
let's say it said 225. It's showing me no tip. So we'll go over to 225 because we all know there's a lot of those, right? 225, if this takes me 30 minutes, what I'm going to make is going to be $7. Whereas if it was, if, if I choose option A and I did accept 225, it's gonna stay at 225, we all know that. Hence, incentivizing for us to trying to take the bad orders. Now, this isn't a bad order, it's 825, right? So let's see if this 825 dealing with a customer that tips us, winds us paying us more than if it was 225 and I was getting more base pay from DoorDash giving us that $14 an hour prorated. That's what we're looking for here. Let's see, let's see how long this takes. All right, we just got here, a little three and a half minute drive. Let's see what we got here. Alright, hello. So pick up for Keisha? Yeah. Alright, this particular order is zero wait time. Was right behind the bar. Let's go drop it off. I almost forgot to remind you guys, DoorDash says if you decline two orders in a row, then you automatically your your dash ends within the pay structure, option number two, and you go back to the accept what you want option number one. Now why would they do that? Clearly, it's because they want you to take every, they want you to accept everything. They don't want you to decline. They don't want you to unassign. They want to keep you active. They want to keep you the hamster on the, the spinning wheel, just going and 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 going nowhere. That's my opinion. Some people ain't going to like that I said that, but that's what they want. They want us robotic, taking everything, dropping it off, not asking questions, not free thinking, not thinking for ourselves. They want to blind you. What it says is if you de if you decline two orders in one hour, your dash will end. You can continue dashing in earn order mode. Two, if you decline two orders in one hour, you know how easy it is to do that? They want you thinking like an employee. All right, we pulling up. Thank you. I have a delivery for Keisha. Keisha, she did pay, yeah. Okay. It didn't give me any kind of, she said she was at a nursing home, but. Okay, you can just sit it on the table. All right, here's the results right here. $5 tip, 325 base pay. What time is it? 2.44, 12 minutes. Not 12 minutes, what am I talking about? That took exactly 20 minutes and we got paid 325. So. 20 minutes at the, at the calculation of $14 an hour, seven, what is that, like five something, right? So they would have paid us more in just base pay if we were on option two. But we're probably taking orders that don't have $5 tips. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of this scenario? Option one, option two. We need to read between the lines and think for ourselves. I think in some minority situations, this might be a good thing for some of us. For the majority of us, if we're just wanting to make, if we're looking at that $14 an hour and don't care if people are tipping us and our time and things like that, you're probably costing yourself money. Sounds like Prop 22, the active time, and you got some of those drivers over there that are just taking everything, taking anything, and they're getting paid active time and they think they're making money when they're actually probably costing themselves money. I feel like this is similar to that. I want to Let's spark a debate. Let's spark a conversation. What do you guys think? Is this in your market? One, what do you think about it? Would you try it? If it came to mind, I would test it for you guys for like a day, but it's not in my market yet, but I know it is in some. Better news set goes one day at a time, bringing you guys the information as it comes to me, dissecting it, ranting about it, giving you my opinion, and then we can learn from each other in the comments section down below. See you tomorrow. Bonus features for you guys. Stayed out for a little bit, did a couple runs, dropped the order off. For some reason, I get back in my car. The transmission stuck in park in the shifter. I looked up, you can actually in my car lift up the little, you can open up where the transmission gear, the shifter's at, and there's a little lever, and you can try to put it in, you can get it into neutral and drive and sport mode. I can't get it into park, therefore the car won't. It's in reverse. I can't start the ignition. When it rains, it pours. It's not how I wanted my day to go. I just got the car. So now I got to tinker with it. I got to open it up. I looked on YouTube. YouTube's a great, great thing to learn. You can just type anything in and you'll find a video. So I got to go home and get my tools. There's like a little bolt switch thing. and a... When it rains, it pours.
I don't know what happened. I have no idea. Maybe I was distracted. I don't know. It's stuck in reverse. It, the car's not reading that it's in park, so I can't start it. So I'm out in front of somebody's home. Stuck. Don't be a distracted driver like me sometimes. I didn't leave the car. I don't know what I did. I have no idea. Learn from my mistakes. I don't know if I shifted it and I wasn't supposed to shift and I turned it on or off. I have no idea. I was on the phone, dropping an order off. I hope I didn't screw my transmission up. I don't think I did. If I did, I don't even know. I'm not happy though. I'm not happy at all. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow, maybe I won't. Pedro Dora Santiago might be out of commission for a while.